welcome you once again to our history virtual um, class. Before we begin with today's lesson, I will urge you to subscribe to the channel and also um, recommend it to your friends. Good. Uh, today we are looking at a very important topic, a very famous topic for that matter, the coming of the Europeans into West Africa. And particularly, we will look at some of the reasons given for the Europeans uh, coming to, of course, West Africa. What were some of the reasons? And that is what we will zero in into. This is a very famous topic in the history of Africa and also the history of the world at large. Um, and so because of that, in your WASI uh, exams, you will be required to answer five questions on this objective and then that's the uh, objective test or the multiple uh, choice test and then in the section B if you are likely we can also get uh, if we uh, I mean of course likely we can also get some section B topic on this that is the essay part and so this is a very important topic that you shouldn't uh, joke with so because before that let's take a look at our lesson objectives so by the end of the lesson, you should be able to list some of the uh, European countries that sailed to West Africa or in Ghana uh, for that matter. So by the end of our discussion, you should be able to list some of, the, some of the European countries that came to West Africa and Ghana. Then also discuss the reasons that accounted for the coming of the Europeans to West Africa in the 15th century. What were some of the reasons that also accounted for the coming of the Europeans into West Africa in the 15th century. And so these uh, two major, um, uh, of course, objectives are what you and I should be, uh, of course, focusing on. And by the end of our discussion, I know that you would be able to fulfill these objectives. So let's first of all begin with the introduction. If I asked you to mention some of the any European country that you know, I know you can mention a lot for me, you can mention of France, you can mention Portugal, you can mention Germany, you can mention uh, Spain and all those countries. All those countries you know of, of course, are European countries. But we want to look at those, which of them came to West Africa, which of these countries actually sailed to West Africa, because not all of them came to West Africa. So let's take a look at our introduction. Now, take note that Portugal was the first European country to come to the African continent or in West Africa. They were the first European country, of course, Portugal. And if you look at the map, this is not a uh, surprise because if you look at the map of Africa, you realize that Portugal, I mean, the Atlas or the world map, sorry, you realize that Portugal actually is very close to West uh, Africa in general. And so if they being the first, it's not a surprise. Between 1419 and 14. 99 they were the first to come now the first two uh, portuguese explorers that actually came uh, were, were pedro de escobar and joa de santa Tram. and these two people or explorers actually reached shama in january 1471 and shama is actually a small village a fishing village in the in the western region of ghana so if you are outside ghana you can actually google and shama and you would uh, know a lot or you would it will interest you to know a lot you will know a lot about them and so they reached the shores of ghana or the modern ghana shama in 1471 again 10 years later don diego de zambuja again also led another expedition in december 1481 uh, together with some portuguese uh, traders and explorers to the shores of present-day elmina so don diego de zambuja and his traders, team of traders, also reached the shores of Elmina in December 1481. And when they got to Elmina, Elmina too is a small fishing town again in the central region of Ghana. So you can also go on Elmina to learn more about this uh, historic uh, the town. Now they named the place El Elmina, which means the mine. El Mina, the mine, the mine, M I N E, the mine, meaning that they saw a lot of gold uh, at the shores of El Mina, and so they called the place the mine, where they mine, all right. And uh, as time went on, uh, the name came to be corrupted to be 
you know, of course, we pronounce or spelled as Elmina, you know, but actually, it's a, it's, it's two, of course, separate words. Now, the English, of course, later uh, called the same place Gold Coast because uh, to the Europeans, of course, Elmina is a Portuguese of course language, and so when the English also came, they also uh, called the place what Gold Coast. Later on, the Portuguese then built a castle uh, at Elmina uh, called Sao uh, George de Elmina. That's the Elmina Castle, Sao George de Elmina, in AD 1482. So after they arrived, Don Diego de Zambuja and his team arrived, two, a year later, they acquired a land from the chief of Elmina, known as Kwamina Ansa, and then they built a castle there, and the castle was to serve two purposes. One, to serve as a warehouse for, of course, themselves, f I mean, f I mean, for the traders, and then also uh, to serve as a place of abode for the Europeans. And then you can also Google if you are outside Ghana, the Elmina Castle, which was the first ever castle built in West Africa by the Portuguese. Now, the Elmina Castle became the main center of Portuguese trade in West Africa. And as I said earlier on, Kwame Nansa was the chief of Elmina at that time who gave them a land at the shore of Elmina for them to build the, the castle, um, you know, in 1482, just a year after Don Diego de Zambuda and his team of traders arrived. Now, after the Portuguese, the next country that also followed, of, of course, was the Spaniards or, this, or Spain. You know, Spain too and Portugal shares borders. And so you realize that, of course, Spain being also close to Africa, of course, it's also in the right direction if they were the second person to or the next European uh, people to have come. After Spain came, now Spain of course they did not stay in Africa for that long because they later discovered the new world and the new world is what we call today uh, the USA and the Latin American countries Uruguay, Brazil, uh, Paraguay, Argentina of course the Latin American countries then the North American country of course that is the US and then of course and Canada as well so the Spaniards actually discovered that area and so they left Africa very very early to concentrate uh, much more on the the new world then the English also came in then the French also of course operated in the coast of West Africa and this was in the order in which the Europeans came uh, during the 15th of course century then the arrival of the Dutch from the of course, 15 of course, 90s posed a threat to the Portuguese, uh, of course, position, uh, position in West Africa. Take notice that even though the Portuguese, even though the Spaniards and the English and the French came, uh, whilst, of course, Portugal was still at the, at the shores of, El, I mean, Elmina, those countries, France and English, uh, the, I mean, of course, the English, that's the UK and the Spaniards, they did not pose much threat to the Portuguese, uh, of course, position as the main uh, trader or trading uh, country in the coast. The, of course, Portugal was still controlling the coast of Elmina. They were still controlling what the trade in those areas. Are you okay? But we are seeing that when the Dutch came in 15, of course, 90s, they were the ones that really posed a big threat to the Portuguese position in West Africa. So 20 years later, of course, when the Dutch came, they were able to conquer all the Portuguese trading ports and castles on the West Coast, including Elmina, and had established a monopoly over the West African trade. Okay, so when Portugal arrived, they had a monopoly. They monopolized the trade. They were in sole control of the trade in West Africa, in Ghana and beyond. Okay, in Elmina and beyond. This, of course, Spanish came, the English came, the French came, but all these countries did, did not pose any threat to the Portuguese establishment on the coast. Okay, and so Portugal was still in control until, in the, of course, the 15, um, um, 90s when the Dutch arrived. And they were the ones that actually gave, of course, Portugal a tough time. And so in 20 years later, the Dutch now succeeded in 
overtaking or taking over all the Portuguese what, uh, trading posts. So now all the Portuguese trading posts were now dominated by the Dutch. It was the Dutch that now controlled all those posts, including Elmina, as we have seen. The Danes again also came in in 14, in 1642. Then the Swiss also came in in 1647. Then the Brandenburgers also came in in 1688. All these, of course, European countries or people also came in. Now you see over here is the name of the people that have been used here. Spinards are from people who are from where? I will not tell you. English, they are from where? I will not tell you. French, they are from where? I will not tell you. So go and look for them. The Dutch, they are from where? I will not tell you. Go and look for them. And then the Danes, and then the Swiss. Where, where these are the people, these are the names of the people, the Vardenberg, these are the names of the people. So go and look for the countries in which these people are. And that will be, uh, of course, one of our objectives being uh, met. Good. So let's go on and look at the, the reasons for the coming of the Europeans. Let's just go, go quickly look at the reasons. Why did Portugal and Spain and other European countries decide to come to West Africa. So let's look at the first one. There, the reasons have been divided or have been categorized into three main parts. We had the social, economic, and also the political factors that motivated the Europeans to come to West Africa. And so we will begin with the economic factors or the economic motives that motivated the Europeans to come to Ghana. The first one was the desire for trade. The most important reason, of course, given for the coming of the Europeans was the economic activities that they wanted to engage in. Now, they, of course, wanted to take part in the Trans-Saharan trade, uh, which had uh, actually de developed between the people of North Africa and the Western Sudanese uh, people. And we, we, we have already stated that the Trans-Saharan trade was a trade that developed between the North Africans and the Western Sudanese. And Portugal was part of this trade because they were bringing in the items needed by the Africans to the North Africans. So the North African or the Berbers became the middlemen in the trade. They take the items from the Portuguese and then they come and exchange them for gold and ivory and slaves. Portugal was uh, needed gold, ivory and slaves. Okay, and so Portugal wanted to dominate or to have direct control or direct access to where these commodities are do you understand because before or prior to their coming to west africa they were trading with the north africans so the babies the north africans were the ones whom the portuguese people were actually trading with so they give the items to all the things needed the mirrors the, the salt and coal needed by the africans to the North Africans, the Berbers. Then, then, then the Berbers would serve as middlemen. They come down to the Western Sudanese area and then they exchange those items. But Portugal wanted to have more. They actually wanted to dominate that Trans-Saharan trade. They didn't want the, the North Africans or the Berbers to be middlemen anymore. They wanted to take charge of the trade by having direct access to the Western Sudanese people so that they can trade in the gold and ivory and the slaves that they of course they wanted so i hope this point is also well explained let's look at the next point the search for a sea route to india and the far east far east is in china so portugal and again of course portugal was trading with india and then china and india and china as you have seen they are very close i think they share even borders they were trading with these people India and China. Uh, they were trading in spices and other exotic what, goods. They were, of course, because they were trading in these goods, they needed a place, a, a sea route. First, they were, they were trading with the Chinese, then the Indians, through the Middle East. So the goods will pass through the Middle East to Portugal. But because of the presence of the Europeans in those areas, uh, Portugal was no more comfortable in, 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 in passing through that, 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 that route. Okay? And so there was a need for them 
to look for another sea route that will go beyond Africa so that they can reach where India and China, the Far East, to trade in those exotic spices. Okay, yes, and that was one reason because the route that they were using to trade with the Chinese and the Indians were through the Middle East. And in the Middle East, because, the, because of the Muslim concentration, the Portuguese or the Europeans who were, who were actually um, uh, Christian nations could not use that route. And therefore, there was the need for them to what? Of course, there was the need for them to find another sea route to India and to the Far East. So let's look at another one. They also needed large markets. They also needed large markets. So of course, Portugal, for instance, explored the coast of Ghana uh, to find what larger or bigger markets for their manufactured what goods. They had manufactured goods such as textiles, copper, and brass, and other stuff. And they needed what areas or other of course market where they could send some of these goods to okay good then the desire for slave also labor actually the portugal had actually uh, uh, had a sugar plantation in sao tome an island of principe and they needed what slaves in these two uh, colonies in africa to actually work in those sugar plantations so there was a desire for a slave labor to get slaves to also work in those plantations so this is it this is the, the diagram to depict the sea route so as you have seen here this is Portugal they share a border with Spain okay so initially this is also India and we have China over here okay so the Portuguese were trading with the Chinese and the Indians for exotic goods as well as what spices Initially, they used this route through the Middle East, Syria, Iraq, of course, Lebanon, and Co. But because this area was Muslim concentrated, they couldn't use this route. So there was a need for them to find another route, of course, past Africa, so that they could what, get or come to India for the same items that they were what they needed. And as you have seen, Portugal and Spain are also very close to Africa. So it it. It, it was not, of course, you know, you know, wrong to say that they were actually the first and second European countries to come to Africa. And this is the New World. This area is what we refer to as the New World. Okay? The area that's what we refer to as the New World. North America, uh, United States, for Canada, and then this area is what we refer to as the New World. Well, good. So with this map, I hope you would you actually understand um, some of the reasons of course, that led to the Europeans to come to West Africa to, call, to look for sea route and other things. So let's look at the next one. Let's again look at the other reasons. Now let's look at the religious motives that were also given. There was also a desire to reduce the Muslim influence. Okay. Now West Africa and North Africa were being dominated by Muslims. North Africa was dominated by Muslims. West Africans and this was spreading down to West Africa and so there was a need for the, the, the Christian nations like Portugal and Spain to actually reduce that influence and so because of that Portugal captured the Moroccan city of Ceuta in 1415 uh, then we have the spread of Christianity to also uh, spread of course Christianity to the West Africans because they believe that there was a white man's burden to Christianize what Africa and so for these reasons they built churches at the castles that they actually you know built for africans and to of course to uh, to and then we have another one to also establish a link with prester john and prester john was a, a, a priest a priest king all right he was a, a priest king who had a, a coptic church or kingdom located somewhere in the river now and then of course the red sea and so there was a need for them to meet with Prester John so that they can uh, quell that Muslim influence in West Africa. Good. So let's look at the next one. So we look at the political of course, reasons that were also given. Imperialist ambition was also accounted for the coming of the 
Europeans. And so basically, the Europeans just wanted to acquire lands in other areas, in other overseas lands and territories. Okay, and so because of that, the king of Portugal was called, uh, who was called King George III, assumed the title of what Lord of the Guinea because he had, uh, of course, possession of all the Guinea, what all the Guinea coast area. So imperialist ambition just to have colonies uh, overseas was also a factor. <sighs> then the last one we talked about, or we can talk about, or we are going to talk about, is the scientific, of course, curiosity. Uh, there were other things that also, of course, motivated the Europeans. One was a scientific of course, curiosity. There was a desire for the Europeans to know about other worlds. Aside their world, they wanted to know about other worlds because now they had been able to invent some instruments like compass, quadrant and astrolabe, an astrolabe which were actually uh, made it possible for them to navigate on the sea without having any what any difficulties and there were also so many untrue stories about africa you can check on the net and see of course some of these untrue stories about africa so they wanted to actually come and find out more what uh, lies beyond the sea and so they started in 1471 and they reached in cape of good hope in uh, 1488 and then also eventually they reached india in 1498 their of course destination good so I think to, to, with this, you have actually learned something uh, about the Europeans. And these were some of the questions that came in your May, June, Wasi questions. I hope if you meet them anywhere, you will be able to work on them. With this, I will say have a nice day. And let's meet same other time on this same TV channel. Subscribe and let your friends also do the same. Have a nice day. Bye.